Okay, guys, welcome back. Right at the moment, I am sharpening chainsaw chain. Uh, we had an ice storm. Started Friday. This is Sunday. Started Friday. And uh, got worse Saturday night. And as a result, I had a tree in the front yard split down the middle and land on the fence going one direction. And 30 minutes later... The other half fell over across the fence in the other direction, blocking the highway. So the neighbors and I got out and had to play in the sleeting rain at 11.30 last night to clear the highway. And Now I've been cleaning up some of the rest today. And This old tree was hollow, and I don't know what all was in there, but in that soft wood is just something, something that was not good for my chain. So anyway... Uh, this is a cheap Chicago Electric Harbor Freight chain grinder. Bottom of the line, cheapest you can get, I think it's about 40 bucks. If you guys have access to something better, you cut a lot of firewood, whatever, you're probably going to want to get a better sharpener. But um, I picked this up after the Joplin tornado. Uh, because we were hitting nails, screws, wire, metal, and uh, also during the tornado, the trees would twist and split right down the middle. And they would open up while all of the gravel and grit and dirt and debris was flying around. And then as the, the winds would settle down, they would close back up. And I don't know how many times we would be cutting a perfectly good looking tree, except the limbs were broke off of it. And you'd get about halfway through, and the sparks would fly, and the chain was just dull. I even had one tree that was split in two, had opened up, and it had somebody's letters and mail stuck in it, and was partially sticking out. And we cut through it and had to get the mail out. So anyway, um, when you're cutting that kind of stuff, you just want to keep your teeth, you know, halfway halfway ground down because you can't file teeth that are chewed all to hell and rounded off. So anyway, um, I just thought I'd do a, a, a short how-to. If you guys want to learn how to run one of these little deals, it's not hard. What you have right here is uh, your chain vise. This one's all manual. You get a nice one. When you pull down on the handle, there's a hydraulic cylinder that actually closes this, and it's all one-handed operation. Um, but this one, like I said, it's bottom of the line. Anyway, I have it set. I just did the teeth facing this direction, and I have it set at 25 degrees. And uh, let me back this up, and I'll show you. What you do is you pull that tooth, you clear that tooth and you back it up against the stop and you lock your vise. You bring it down. I don't know what you guys are running, but all the chains I've ground are running 25 degrees on your, on your back rake. You bring that down so that that blade just barely kisses the front of that tooth. I don't know if you can see that. Sorry, I don't have a lot of light in here. To bring it down until that just kisses the front of that tooth. Right back here is a knob. This sets your depth. That's how far down the wheel goes. You don't want to cut in real deep into your chain links, but you also don't want to leave a step up here on the edge of your tooth. And as your wheel wears, you want to take and dress that radius back on that wheel. And basically, these wheels are the right width to grind your chain. And uh, so you just basically dress an even radius all the way around with a, with a dressing stone. Um, but anyway, I'm getting ready to do the opposite set of teeth. So we unlock it. We pull up to that set of teeth. We back up. And when you pull back on these cheap ones especially, pull back with the same force every time. Because you can actually uh, tweak it and change your depth. Okay, we want to set the vise on 25 degrees the opposite direction and I, I 
set it on 25 and then I really check it against the chain and it looks like we need to go just a hair more because the old man that sharpened this one by hand <laughs> me may not have uh, kept a, a good 25 degrees okay now what I see in there it's probably hard for you guys to see but what I see in there is a little bit of a gap from the face of the wheel to the to the face of the tooth and I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to adjust this distance in just a hair and uh, but I'm gonna start it up and grind it and when you grind it you watch where your spark is from if your spark is on the side of the wheel then you are grinding the face of the tooth if your spark is only from the bottom of the wheel then you are just grinding down in the radius and you want to grind both as long as you're not grinding too deep into the teeth or down into the chain links like I was saying I'm gonna start this up it makes a little bit of noise it's not bad and we'll see what it looks like okay so I don't know if you could see that real well but all the sparks were coming off the radius of the wheel which means it was grinding down in the radius of the tooth but not up on the cutting edge up here so we're going to loosen the vise I'm going to back this knob right here up just till there's a gap in there and then I'm going to run the whole thing back forward just a hair make sure we're back against it stop lock it back down and try again and when you're when you're pulling on this on these plastic ones you can flex this back and forth you want just a light pressure two fingers is all you need you don't you want it pulls at an angle so you want to you want to follow this angle you don't want to be pulling down like this because you'll change how it grinds and like I said a better a better grinder you wouldn't have these problems You probably notice that when I index the chain you skip two teeth that's because uh, the cutting edge is going this way on one tooth and that way on the other tooth but on some chains you will get to a spot where the the one tooth and the tooth following it the cutting edge is going in the same direction some chains don't have it this chain uh, doesn't have it so you skip two and when you go make sure that you don't catch that. Make sure you're actually against the back of the tooth. I'm stuck on it. But make sure you're actually up against the back of the tooth. Basically, guys, that's how you do it. Um, I take a, a magic marker or a paint marker and I mark the top of my teeth. That way I know when I'm all the way around. Another thing is if you start grinding and you're grinding on one tooth and you go to your next tooth and it doesn't grind on the face well then that one's been filed a little harder or something and uh, if you're cutting junk like say we're clearing storm debris storm damage you don't really care too much but if you're cutting good firewood and everything um, you really want your teeth to be even because if your teeth aren't even then then this teeth this tooth is not cutting it gets hot and when they get hot they lose their hardness and uh, plus the tooth in front of it and the tooth behind it are taking up the load and if, if every tooth is not cutting to maximum capacity then it's harder on you it's harder on the clutch it's harder on the saw as this thing is spinning you're throwing out a certain amount of oil and if it takes longer to cut through that piece of wood you're using more gas more oil and more time 
anyway guys uh, hope that uh, taught you something save you some time and as always wear your safety glasses and these things will be sharp when you're done so be careful thanks for watching